Welcome to US Strategy 360, I'm Neil Sokont. Today, we'll meet a young family of three, Tiffany, her husband Tony, and a daughter, Carrie Cao. Tiffany immigrated to the United States from Taiwan in 1982, with aspirations to live the American dream and to build a family. After she and Tony got married, they were ecstatic to have children. And while children are normally a cause for joy and celebration, it became clear during Tiffany's pregnancy that not all was right. It was discovered that Carrie would suffer from dwarfism, a genetic condition which is a disorder of bone growth. It was in fact uncertain whether Carrie would even survive birth. But with the spiritual support from Buddhist philosophy, Tiffany was able to carry a daughter to full term. Carrie is now a student at Suchi Great Love Elementary School. It's there that we discovered today's story. Let's go meet the whole family. I came uh, in 1982, October 29th. I just remember it was a long flight. And it took us about 18 hours on the airplane to get here with my sister and my parents. I was 16. I really don't know what to expect. You always believe it's a better life here. So my parents believe we're going to have a better life here. So kind of have that in mind. But I remember the first day of school. It was terrible. My sister and I were both crying during recess. We wanted to go home. Because you don't understand what kids are talking about, and you don't know where your classroom is, you're running around. It was hard, and you don't have a friend yet, so it was very hard. Kids' school came, and they have a whole bunch of um, um, friends from the, from the Buddhist club. So they all sit, line up right in front of the panel. And I look at him like, he looked funny because he, he, he was 19, but he dressed up like he was like 30, <laughs> okay? So, and then they were all talking and then all of a sudden he was a VP. And I'm like, who's that guy? So interesting, and talk funny and with glasses and goofy haircut. So that's my first impression of him. Oh, the first time I had been part of a Buddhist wedding was Tony and his wife's wedding. It was held in the Yamashiro Mountain Palace. Our eldest monks presided over the ceremony and the other abbots were chanting. I remember that quite a lot of Buddhists attended. And then little Carrie was born a few years later. excited um, and high expectation what we're gonna do with our kid I have a list of things that I'm gonna do with this kid uh, but you never know what you're gonna expect second trimester the initial start of my second trimester so I went to the, the specialist and my specialist all of a sudden told me oh your kid is your kid's head is too big it's, it, it's not in the right proportion. The femur bone was, was, was strange, was too short at that time. I said, what are you talking about? So he told me, oh, you know, you, you, your kid is going to be a dwarf. I'm like, what are you talking about? So it was, that was like shocking. It was scary and it was shocking. I, I went to the doctor myself. So when I left in the air letter, I was crying and crying. I couldn't help it. I was crying. I didn't know what to do and who to turn to. I drove all the way home, crying and crying. And then I go online and check and to see all that. From the perspective of karma, this is your responsibility. What can you do? Can't run away forever. I said, let's go have lunch with the abbot. When you're dining with a monk, you don't think about these things. Yeah, what else can you do? Since it has happened, you have to face it. Whatever happens, you have to deal with it. It's very hard for anyone to become completely fine with the issues because they have to consider the development of a child, the child's future, and being a father and a husband is a very difficult job for Tony. 
So when he was sad, he had to cry silently, in secret. Why? What would the others think? If his wife Tiffany saw him crying, saw him falling apart, the entire family would crumble. So in the Bible, the word is very special. Everything tangible in the world is actually like the reflection in water or a dream, like the morning dew and the flashing lightning. We need to realize this fact. Let bygones be bygones and seize the present moment. Don't cling on to the past. Why? Because it's already past. Why dwell on it? Don't cling on to the present because the present will pass by very quickly too. So forget about that. And don't think too much about the future because it hasn't happened yet. That's the explanation. Everything is a result of affinities and karma, so we shouldn't think about it too much. When the circumstances and affinities are right, things will happen, and when they are not, things will be gone. Went to specialists after specialists, and we went to so many different specialists, and the answer is still the same. So we decided just to face it. My OBGYN, she was trying her best. She keep on calling the uh, and get me the best specialist. So I went to Cedar Sinai. So they're supposedly the best for kids under that condition. So we were referred there, and we went to see um, the doctor there. And she had like all the high tech st stuff, and then was doing a 3D, and then showing my kid, and she was showing me, and then after that she said, "Unfortunately, yes, my conclusion is the same." So she told us, uh, "We have few options." She told me, "You can have a late term abortion, but it may put yourself in danger and put the kid in danger, or we can put." Or once the kid is born, we can put the child in adoption. We're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> But I think as a doctor, she needs to offer the options and to tell us the, all the worst possibilities. She also told me that that my baby only has 50 percent of surviving at childbirth. Say okay, fine. We decided just to be happy and just forget about what all the doctors and specialists said, and then just prepare for the for the baby coming. A lot of people like to say. Children are a karmic retribution. Actually, as laymen, we don't understand it. From my observation, Carrie gave us motivation, not a burden, and she motivated her parents. In this journey, she has made their hearts stronger and more perseverant, and also strengthened their faith in the Buddhist teaching. Say bye to all your friends. We said goodbye to each person. Some of them didn't hear it. Hi, Nika. Nika. Hi, Adriana. Okay, we'll go back to kindergarten to find mom. In this family of three, I see giving among them, not demands, because of this giving, this loving support, they have infected the rest of us with love. We learn to give our love out similarly. So now I can often tell them, when you see such a child, don't say that it's your karmic retribution. Because we don't know, we don't have realization or seeing of the previous lifetime, so we don't know if she was karmic retribution.
纹身。It's okay. Here, say the truth. Yeah. Oh, your papa and mama are so strong. Yeah. Oh, you're so smart. You're not a fool. He's very smart. He's not a fool. You're not a fool. Maybe his karmic retribution was what we say in Buddhism, returning with a vow. Why did some come back with a vow? To test us? To test our love? Oh, really? Because we don't understand all that the Buddhists of our try to show us. When we say that people are receiving their karmic retribution, we are actually being unfeeling. This is what I always emphasize. When we see someone like this, we have to treat her like a Bodhisattva. She is a Bodhisattva, here to test our love. From certain points of view, she is a teacher quizzing us. This is where she tests us with a different question, giving us a passing or failing grade. Because Tiffany was told by her doctor that her baby would have a 50% chance of survival at birth, when Carrie finally was born without any health problems, Tiffany and Tony were happy beyond words. However, the parents know a person with dwarfism can face prejudice against their height, which can lead to bullying in childhood and to discrimination as an adult. Even the decision to raise such a child can be hard, let alone the day-to-day -day difficulties. Yet, Tiffany and her husband stuck to the values of love and encouragement to create a positive environment for Carrie. One important philosophy they uphold to build Carrie's confidence is in the idea of equality. Tiffany even quit her job while Carrie was in preschool to be close to her and to make sure her daughter would be okay. Now, she is a teacher at Tsuchi Great Love Preschool. She has the same expectation for Carrie as she has for the children in class. Even Carrie's teachers are aware of it. So, let's go see how Carrie gets through her days. After I came back from the hospital, I was, I go online and I look at things and I look at the kids with skeletal dysphagia. It's very hard. Am I gonna look like that? What is she gonna do? She can't reach this, she can't do that, she can't. But, you know, after we decided to face it, we figured, you know, we build up her confidence. You know, we build up her confidence and if she's surrounded with love, she should have the courage. So that's kind of what we're thinking. It bothers her. She come and tell me a lot, a lot of things too. But but I think she's had the courage to to face it. So we start praying, we start giving us ourselves homework. So he was doing the um Dizang Pusa uh, Sutra. And I was doing uh, the Medicine Buddha Sutra. So we start doing that. So his homework was very, very long. His homework, someone who just started would probably take at least an hour to finish. And he did it two times a day from that point on to when the kid was born. So that period of time, he was doing that. And then we told many of our friends, and then so they were doing the same thing to, to help us. A lot of things is beyond, beyond your control. You want to control your life, you do this and you do that. But no matter no matter how well you take care of yourself, you still get sick. You know, I still lose my voice. You know, I can't control that. So I do that kind of to help myself. 
calm myself and rejuvenate myself, looking, re-looking at myself, you know, every time I do the homework, help me. They are Buddhists, so when they first faced this challenge, they were puzzled and upset. But soon they solved that puzzled in their hearts and used the wisdom of Buddhism to deal with the problem. I think they dealt with it very well. A lot of our friends, they told us, you know, because she chose the family. She she probably chose the family because she knew that that you guys will not abandon her. Yeah. That will take good care of her. So. Everyone has a different perspective. Some people will tease her or make fun of her. I saw some kids telling her, how old are you? Why are you still so tiny? So as a child, Carrie probably didn't feel it, but she started to notice. I know her mother told her, you are no worse than anyone else. Your wisdom is no less. You are no worse than anyone in anything, except that you are slightly smaller than the average child. You are no different than any other normal kid in everything else. You are even better than they are in some ways. So be confident in yourself. We've been letting her know that she's that way and she's going to be small. She's not going to be growing as fast as the other kids. We let her know that. And she knows that. But she still wants to be taller. She still wants to be bigger. She will do anything. We will try. We have remedies, right? People, oh, you can try this, you can try that. And she will try. She will try everything you tell her to do. She will try. <laughs> Exercise you ask her to do. She will try. She just wants to be taller. Sometimes she acts behind her mother's back. Why am I still smaller than the other children, even though I'm older? Will I grow again? Our other volunteers will learn to guide her the way her mother did. Give her an emotional hint that she is not worse than anyone. Once her confidence is established and strengthened, I am sure she won't be troubled in the future. Because she will know that we all love her. Not only her parents love her, the abode the monk love her. The volunteers, like us, love her. When everyone's love for her is complete, she will be very happy and it will strengthen her confidence. I think little Carrie has a fairly strong sense of self-esteem right now, stronger than her peers, which is mostly thanks to her mother's education. I, I even role play with her at home. Because a lot of times it's because the other kids, they don't understand. Not because they're me, as you just don't understand, okay?
we just kind of show her you need to stand up for yourself when they do that. You need to tell them certain things. Maybe you can tell them this and you don't like it. And I'm just this way and that way, but I'm happy. You know, kind of how go back and forth with her like that. And her friends, uh, they're, they're Mormons, but she knows how to take care of herself. So I'm not too worried about that at all. When they themselves overcame this obstacle in their heart, it's what we call liberation in Buddhism. When they are liberated like this, they use this liberated heart to help their child. I believe the child will be able to be liberated from this emotional struggle too. Carrie won't be troubled by her physical disability. And truly mothers are the first teachers. From the aspect of the community, mothers are the great bodhisattvas too. We just saw that Carrie told her mother that she would do anything to be taller, like normal people. But how do you define normal? When I personally discovered Carrie's story, it reminded me of this saying that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And if we see Carrie as a normal individual, then she too will feel no different from us. It was very touching to see Carrie interact with her classmate, lively, unlike any other child of her age. In life, we can only handle what we have been given. And from Tiffany, Tony, and Carrie, we see that they have learned to turn the difficulties into joy and happiness. Their story is an inspiration for us all. My team and I would like to thank the Kao family for letting us into their lives. Tiffany and Carrie's story doesn't end here. So stay with us for more. And I hope you enjoy today's presentation. I'm Neil Sokant. Thank you for watching us, and I will see you soon. Oh,